Hello and welcome back to Something Unlimited. Success, and Astro pulled off the heist successfully. You obtained Tech Core. Big Gummy Office. All right, I have the final piece I need. I'll send Harley down to the warehouse and meet her there. You walk out of the office with a small device in hand. You walk into the abandoned-looking warehouse. Harley is off in the corner and walks over to you. Uh, is this the right place? Is this the right place even, Mr. L? Yes, this is it. I had to find somewhere on the docks that wasn't too far from Strikers. You walk over to some boxes for a moment. After pressing on a hidden panel, a section opens up on one revealing, a comp reve one revealing complex technology. You carefully put the piece into place and press another button to close it. There we go. We're going to break people out directly. I spent a lot of time in there memorizing the layout and dimensions, so I should be able to pinpoint them easily at this time of night. In theory, they should be in their cells. So how are we going to make a big tunnel or s So how are we going to make a big tunnel or something? No, we bring them here. I've secretly modified this warehouse into a large-scale teleporter. I'll use their dampening field to mask it as well. Even the Justice League will have a hard time figuring out how they escaped with no evidence. Wow! Well, let's see how it works first. You both walk over to the co closer to the wall. You flip a switch on an old-looking crate and control panel opens up. Quickly, you go through the sequence of buttons. There is a loud hum under the ground of electricity. Finally, you hear a small beep and press another button. There is a bright flash of light for a moment. Suddenly, Poison Ivy is standing in the middle of the warehouse. Ugh. What the hell? You walk up out of the shadows. Lex, you're in my warehouse on the edge of Metropolis. Well, a little warning would have been nice. But it is good to be out again. There is a door to a passage over in the corner. It ends up in an un under a building you can use as cover for a while. Just don't forget who released you. Hmm. I suppose I should lay low for a little bit. Don't worry, I don't forget my friends. For now, though, I need to get out of these clothes. I'll see you around, Lex. Poison Ivy struts off for the corner of the room. You walk back over by Harley and start to move some crates around. You've unlocked Poison Ivy as a hireable villain. Prison break is locked for five days before I can repeat it. That's fine. I don't think there's anything else in the office. Okay, you can't do that. Nothing yet. As you walk in, you're confronted by Sportsmaster. Hey, Lex. We gotta talk. All right, what is it? I was having a relaxing drink, trying to enjoy some shows. Wouldn't you know it? Out walks my baby girl. Now fair's fair, I know how it goes. But imagine all my trauma at seeing that. I thought I'd talk to you about getting my cut. You know, to help with my pain. You think to yourself for a moment. If I don't get some compensation, I might make things real difficult around here. Fine, how much do you want? Couple hundred grand ought to help me out with all this stress. You think to yourself for a moment again, then let out a loud sigh. Go talk to Roulette and she'll give you your money. <laughs> well, this ought to tide me over. Pleasure doing business with you, Lex. Sportsmaster heads directly over the, to Roulette. After a couple minutes of talking, she leaves Sportsmaster by the bar and starts walking over. That knucklehead Sportsmaster said you told him I would give him two hundred grand? Yes, for now, anyways. I assume there's a long game here that I don't quite see. A short-term solution to perhaps a long-term problem. Give him the money for now. If things get out of hand, then I'll use a permanent solution. Well, I trust your judgment, but I'll be keeping a record open on how much this is costing. Fine, well, I have other things to take care of. 
Let's see. So these are all the same. We will do an entire leash episode. Let's go to the lab. Is there, do we have any devices? I still cannot fucking get Zatanna. This bitch. I fucking swear to God. I don't know what her deal is. She's already full. She's upgraded. Hmm. Oh. Not yet, that'll be next. So again, we're doing them one at a time just because of how buggy this can be. This bitch! Hmm. Reset. I don't think we put Miss Marsh in there. Oh, Stargirl hasn't been? Okay, so I have to go upgrade her. Miss Martian takes the stage. She slowly walks out to the pole and grabs onto it. She kicks her feet, her feet high as she walks around the stage. Finally, she arches her back against the pole. She rubs her ass up and down against it. Patrons toss money at her feet and she moves. She bobs up and down a few more times and leaves the stage with a spin. Everyone cheers as she walks off. Hot Girl takes the stage. She flies out over the patrons. She circles around the pole and grabs onto it with one hand. Slowly, she glides down, down it in circles. She comes to a stop in front of the pole and grabs onto it tightly. She pushes out her chest as far as she can while her wings are wide open. Money covers the stage as the patrons cheer her on. Finally, she takes off again and flies back over to the patrons to the back of the room. Stargirl takes the stage. She slowly walks around the stage, shaking her ass. Quickly, she grabs onto the pole and sticks it out of the audience. Everyone cheers as she swings around, giving everyone a look. Her hips shake from side to side as she moves around. Patrons toss money onto the stage as she walks over it. Finally, she does a couple more spins and hops back off the stage. Let's see. Bitch! Why can't that be un- why, why can't these two be unlocked? What the fuck is going on? That is super duper weird. That is- Okay, this is the newest version. That is weird. Um, hmm. Okay, there's Stargirl. Bitch, get up locked. Come on! Why is she still broken? Hmm. That is so weird. I need to know what happens.
That fucked that up. Yes, I did. I fucking hate Bizarro sometimes. Okay, so we don't have anything really, so I'll just keep them. Welcome, darling. So nothing new. Yes, mistress. Such politeness. Ah, oh, to know the joys of enslavement. I remember when I was a young slave. You and Raven stare at Tala for a moment. Anyways, what tricks do you have to entertain me, Raven? All my tricks are magic. And you do not let me use magic. Ah, oh, yes. You don't know any dances? I don't dance. Hmm, that's disappointing. Don't worry, darling. Tala will teach the little ones some tricks for you. Yes, very good. Then you should learn some another. Then you should learn another reward for your servant. Another reward, master. Yes, some proper motivation for the young raven. Now walk over and rub her thighs. Of course, baby. Uh, what? Raven takes a couple steps back, but Tala grabs her arm. Unable to resist, she pulls Raven close to her and rubs her out her thigh with her free hand. Mistress, wait. You watch them carefully as Tala moves her hand up and down. All right, now we're in her thigh. Raven shudders slightly as Tala moves her hand along her inner thigh. Like this, darling? Tala slides her hand to almost touch Raven's pussy, but then slides it down again. Okay, okay, that's good. Tala, re Tala releases Raven and moves back by your side. Raven's face is bright red. Come back over here. She takes a few steps back to where she was standing. I guess you're wondering what that was? You see, the same device that limited your anger can also amplify other emotions and sensations. Right now, your pleasure from others touching you is greatly intensified. What? Oh, such a lucky little slave you are. Raven cracks a horrible fake smile. Oh, yes, so lucky, mistress. Well, I'll leave you to your training. You should teach her some tricks for next time. Of course, master. We will work to do, young one. As you wish, mistress. If you are good, Tala will reward you. Tala licks her fingers one by one. Good girl. This is nothing else to summon. No other items. Let's go to villains. We haven't switched out in a while. Eh, she hasn't had it. Hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. Post it. Villains. Huh. All right, there is a glitch going on. We'll figure that one out. Nothing needs to be upgraded. Is there anyone we need to capture? Get in there, big boy. Hmm. Reset. Eh, why not try it? All you can do is fail. Hey, Mercy, you want to talk to me? Okay, we've done that enough. Hey, Harley, I have a present for you. Oh boy, a present for me? You sure are swell, Mr. L. You pull out the collar from behind your back. Harley immediately looks concerned. Uh, that sure is a weird gift. So, um, I saw people talking about Mad Love, and they assume that because of Canically, before probably DC changed it, how Harley got her, got through college, I don't think she's necessarily stupid like some people were assuming. She knows, she's smart enough to know she can use her body to get what she wants. That's not stupid. That knows, that's knowing what you're, 
what you can do. I still don't like Harley. I'm just saying it's just funny that they automatically thought she was stupid for that. Also, I'm pretty sure the D was purposely so the teacher would get her in the room. Oh, I get it. It's a collar for Butter Lou. That sure is nice of you, Mr. L. No, it's for you. Oh. I didn't know you was into kinky stuff. It's also a magic collar. I'd like you to put it on. All right, Mr. L. She takes the collar from your hand and takes a step back. Also, take off your clothes as well. Harley nods and quickly strips down. As she lifts the collar up to her neck, it quickly wraps around it. Ah! It glows white for a moment, then returns to normal. Hmm. I'm going to skip over this again. So, uh, during the hand job, my game crashed. <laughs> Lois was just that good. Haven't we seen that? No, we haven't. Okay. Let's get her in that, then. We'll start with the first costume. What? You want me to strip? Hey, what about dancing? I'm really getting good at that. The best performers always leave the audience wanting more. I guess you can go back to dancing for people in the Glamour Slam. What the hell is a Glamour Slam? Strip club I made to mind-controlled heroines performing. What? Seriously? Fine. Just no Glamour Slam. Stripping for a bunch of creeps? Gross. At least you're just one creep. She says under her breath. Barbara slowly walks over to the middle of the room. Hmm. Blow job. This seems to be moving a lot faster than I thought. Now, now, you wouldn't want me to get bored, would you? Helena lets out a sigh and shrugs. I suppose I've been in worse situations than this. You take a few steps back and start to undress in front of her. Hey, what the hell are you doing? I'd prefer to be naked, honestly. No need to get my clothes dirty, just in case. You pile your clothes in a neat pile as she watches you with a surprised look. You fold your pants and put them on top and turn towards Helena. Oh, well, Lex. I guess those rumors Lana Lang was spreading were true after all. I've done that with her. I'm going to save that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so nothing new for her. I still want to see when we can actually get them to interact. You walk into the room with a wide grin on your face. Cheshire sits up from her bed and flops back down. What is it now? What is it now, Lex? I'd suggest you get up. My reply from the League has come in grand fashion. She seems uninterested and plays with a green strap on her hand. Then sighs and flips up gracefully to her feet. All right, since I'm bored anyways. The door to the room swishes open. Ra's al Ghul, the demon's head himself, slowly enters the room. Master? Cheshire drops to a single knee in shock. I, 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 silence. Your, impers your imprisonment is a sign of your utter failure. Yes, I'm sorry, master. But from this defeat, a new opportunity. Rise, child. Cheshire slowly gets back to her feet with her head lowered. I have decided to rescind the contract on Lex Luthor. But, master... You defy me? I order you silence! Cheshire calmly bows her head to Ross. Luthor has agreed to pledge considerable resources to the League in exchange. Even the League of Shadows must act in its own self-interest from time to time. I am, he I am here to myself as an act of good faith. As for you, your punishment is also your new task. You will serve Lex Luthor till I see fit. Cheshire makes a surprised expression but nods. Luthor, leave us. Very well. You turn and walk outside the room. Watch Luthor as best as he will allow, so that he does not betray his bargain. Uh, of course, master. Good. I leave you to your duties, then. Raj al Ghul leaves the room. Cheshire bows her head as the door slides shut again. You wait in the hall for a few minutes. After a while, Raj al Ghul emerges from Cheshire's room. He slowly walks down the hall to you. Well, 
Do you think she bought it? Raja Ghul slowly melts away in a purple glow to reveal Tala. Oh yes, Tala was flawless. Your script was perfect, baby. Excellent. Well, this is a gamble. But for now, it gets Cheshire off my back and into my hands for use. I'll have to try and strike a deal of some kind with the real league, though. Hopefully, with her in my pocket, I can do that and discover who made the contract in the first place. I'll just keep her from contacting the League for now until I can work out this out further. Very wet. Oh, very darling. Let's leave her to the think of all that for now. I don't want to press my luck right now. And I should escort Raja al Ghul out anyways. Of course, darling. You quietly walk into Superwoman's room as the doors open for you. She quickly floats over to you. So you're bad, Lex, then? Then you're ready to believe me? Well, I wouldn't go that far yet, but I've seen a lot of things I can't really explain. Also, goody-goody Lex Luthor would never do this. At least I can't figure out the angle, really. There's no angle. I bought you here and I control you. You'll be, a worth you'll be worthwhile to me or I'll find another use for you. That cold calculation is kind of sexy, Lexi. It reminds me of my boyfriend. I assume he's an evil genius as well, then? Oh, the evilest and most genius, honey. I'll admit, I do kind of have a type that always gets my guard down. Those muscle-bound guys are just boring. Well, that sounds encouraging. You do have a pretty simple choice now. I'm running a mind-control sex ring to make some capital. Well, everyone does that at some point, really. You can either serve me personally, or I can throw you in with the other others as a mindless slave. That's some choice. I suppose serving an evil Lex Luthor would be an interesting change of pace. You may call me Master. Superwoman gets a devious look on her face. You can call me Mary then, Master. Oh, you know, maybe this will be fun. I'll give you some extra privileges for now. You can move freely around the base, but some rooms are still restricted. If you prove yourself, then maybe I can extend those to full ones. Why, thank you, Master Badlex. I think I'll go for a stroll, then, if I have your permission. Very well. Mary slowly struts past you with her long legs. You watch her head out the door and down the hall. After a minute or two, you walk out as well. Mari slowly gets up off the bed as you walk in. Hmm, this isn't very enter this isn't exactly very entertaining for me waking up in here all this time all the time. That's not really my problem though. I could see about giving you some more privileges, but you'd have to agree to be my personal slave first. All right. Well, that was easy. Only I've never been. Only I've never been. Um. Fuck it! Let's go full in on this one. You guys had to have known what you were doing writing that line. Only I've never been a slave that I know of anyways. That's fine. You'll be, you'll be eased into it. I never actually had a heroine agree this fast, so we can take it slow for now. Great. Maybe this will be a lot of fun, Master Lex. You're not worried about John is going to think? Nah, I have, been an, I have an easy out. That evil villain Lex Luthor mind controlled me. The things he made me do. Mori pretends to tremble a bit as she speaks. Hmm, very convincing. If my normal self won't be able to remember, then it will be true. At least to those memories, anyway. You've really thought this through, haven't you? I don't have much else to do in here. You're secure now. As long as you remain my loyal pet, that is. Of course, Lex. Good. Well, this gives me things to think over. You turn and walk out of Mari's room. Mari lets out a sigh. She slowly relaxes on her bed. You walk into the room and find Kara hovering near the ceiling corner. She quickly flies down to the floor and takes a couple steps in. I can assure you there's no way out of here. Hmm. <laughs> Even if there was a weakness, you may have noticed you can't damage anything in here. And I'm assuming you soundproof this room, too? Naturally. I was going to pre-record some fake evil plans to feed to you, 
But I just thought that's too much work just to mess with you. You think you can just treat me like some weird toy? Yes. <laughs> you may have you may have a Kryptonian brain, but you seem to be lacking any real development. Hey, maybe I let you capture me. Ever think of that? Yes, but no. You're not a planner, Kara. You tend to act first and think never. Hmm. One major weakness of the Kryptonians on this planet is overdependence on your powers, especially when a single rock of kryptonite can basically disable them. My power is my mind, and it can't be shut down so easily. I can just hit it enough times. Well, that's enough monologuing for now. I'll give you some time to start before I start my tests. Tests? It's rare to have access to a natural Kryptonian, so it'd best make use of this opportunity. Hey, let's not go crazy here. So much to do. You turn and walk out, ignoring Kara completely. Hey, come back here! Lex? Galatea quickly stands up by her bed as you enter. How's your body today? I feel brand new. You sure did a great job healing me, Daddy. That's the voice Kara is supposed to have. Well, I know every inch of you, Galatea. I even memorized your DNA. It's still best not to test your limits. Due to you being nearly impervious, it can be difficult to deal with wounds to your body. If you start bleeding internally, you could still die. I simply wouldn't be able to perform surgery quickly on you. Okay, I won't push myself. It was only pure luck I was able to save you last time. Do you know who was able to do this much damage to me? There are many Justice Leaguers who would be capable of hurting you. More than likely, they fought you as a group, though. I wasn't there to witness what happened. I only managed to find you at the last possible moment afterwards. I'm sorry, I'll definitely have my revenge, though. Well, no more flying off in a murderous rage by yourself. Do you know what made me so angry? I don't know. Like I said, I barely managed to find you after I realized you'd gone for too long. Ugh, my memory is so hazy when I try to remember. Best to forget it for now. We will have revenge in time. I'm working on a surprise that will help you with that. Oh, a surprise? What is it? A surprise. Now don't cause yourself or me any unnecessary stress. Yes, sir. You turn and walk out of Galatea's room. So with that, we are done. Thank you guys so much for joining me for more of Something Unlimited. Don't forget to check out my Patreon subscribe star. You don't have to, but it helps a ton. You can also become a member wherever you're watching this. Or just drop by one of my streams on Twitch and say hi. It's Sinfully Pure, just like my other YouTube channel. Thanks for being awesome, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.